Right, so this is a really short video, and um, this is just a video on periodic trends of reactivities of metals. Uh, this goes right along with the lab we did in class today, or I guess they'll do it tomorrow. Um, either way, um, it's the, the lab, the alkaline metal lab that we're doing. And um, in class, uh, we looked at three different metals. So we looked at um, aluminum, which is here in the 13th row, or 13th column, and we looked at magnesium, and we looked at sodium. And um, we put these metals in, uh, let's see, what was the first thing we did? Um, we put them in water, just distilled water, and used litmus paper. And we found out that it turned the litmus paper um, a certain color, which means that these are basic metals in water, or some of them are. Um, and alkali, uh, like alkali metals and alkaline earth metals, is a fancy word for basic. So alkali, or alkaline, means that something is basic. So we have acidic, and we have basic things, alkaline is a fancy word for basic. So anyways, we looked at these three metals and uh, we found that um, some of them were basic. Um, then we put these metals in acid, hydrochloric acid, and we basically saw that the reactivity of metals is high as we go from right to left. So sodium was more reactive than magnesium, magnesium was more reactive than aluminum, which is why we use aluminum for to build lots of things. Airplanes are typically made out of aluminum. Uh, newer airplanes are made out of composites. But metal airplanes are typically aluminum because you wouldn't want to make them out of um, steel or iron because the further you go down a periodic table, the heavier metals weigh or the more dense they are. So aluminum is a fairly light metal. You want light metal for an airplane for sure. Um, sodium and magnesium are lighter. However, if it rains on your plane, you don't want your plane falling apart if it's made out of sodium or your magnesium, similar things. Um, iron is a great metal, although it rusts in the presence of rain. And um, if you're go going over cities um, with acid rain, you don't want to be landing your plane when there's acidity in the air as well. So from right to left, reactivity increases. The other thing we found out was, um, with the demo I did, we did lithium and sodium and potassium. And we found that as you go down a column, reactivity increases. So really the most reactive or most active metal is francium, all right? And it happens to also be the most metallic metal, all right? So what I would note is as far as metals go, um, the most reactive is francium. Non-metals, all right, so then we have non-metals, and it's kind of just the opposite over here. So non-metals, the most reactive non-metal is fluorine, all right? So we kind of have these extremes in the periodic table where fluorine is the most reactive non-metal and francium is the most reactive metal. And um, if you look kind of here in the middle, all right, kind of actually make like a backwards L, these metals, copper, silver, gold, and platinum, are probably the most non-reactive metals, or the most non-reactive things in the periodic table. Um, oftentimes they're referred to as precious metals. So typically jewelry, um, expensive things are made out of these metals. How come? Because they don't react with water. They don't react with acid. They're very, 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 very stable metals. And where are they? Right in the middle of the periodic table, where the extremes of our periodic table are really, really reactive nonmetals and really, really reactive metals.